Hello and welcome to another exciting breakfast with the Unity. We're going to be doing a grenade launcher today. Part of the reason that I'm doing a grenade launcher today is because I really want to do a ballistic targeting system um, a la Tribes 2. Because I haven't seen it done in many games and I think it would be cool to see it come back. Um, I'm not sure if anyone has played Tribes 2, but there was a really cool laser targeting system that allowed you to get ballistic information as to where to aim to shoot your grenades to actually have them hit a particular target. Um, but uh, that's not going to be this episode, that's going to be the next episode, but we need a grenade launcher first anyway, so let's make a grenade launcher. So, um, let's see, um, let's set up a basic scene, what do we have for a good scene for a grenade launcher? Let's go back to, um, yeah, let's just build a new scene. So, create... We're going to create a plane, we're going to create a directional light, we're going to make our plane bigger so we have a lot of room to work with. We're going to put it at zero, we're going to drag in a standard assets character controller, first person controller, put him somewhere useful. Alright, cool. And uh, let's just make sure that we can run around. All right, looking good. Sweet. Did we have a ground with a texture at some point? No, I guess we haven't done that yet, really. <laughs> um, might be helpful for distance reasons. Um, but let's just get it working first. So first, let's save the scene and put it in our grenade launcher thing. Ch -ch -ch, grenade launcher. Um, we're going to call this uh, grenade launcher. And now what are we going to do? So um, let's uh, let's make a grenade launcher. So we might have some scripts to actually do this. Um, what do we have right now? If we do collide, if I search for collide, okay, we don't have anything. If we do trigger, do we have something? Activate trigger. And if I search for what was the other thing we needed? Oh, yeah, force. We had uh, explosion physics force. Sweet. Um... Wait, why does this only have... Wait, I don't know what this one was for. Oh, this is not our script. I could tell because it was like, wait, this is weird. Um, so we had something when we did uh, add explosion force. We have a just explode on button. There we go. All right, so this is not going to be an explode on button type scenario. Do we have, uh, let's see, gib... We don't have any gibs. We haven't done anything that I called gib. I'm kind of surprised by that. All right, so we are going to have to write a couple scripts. I thought we had a couple, but we don't have them, believe it or not. So um, we're going to first create a gib on collide. So gib on collide. As I said, this is going to be an impact grenade launcher, kind of like the M79. And we're going to have a public um, game object gib. We could call it Gib Prefab as well, but I'm just going to call it Gib. And we're going to call, uh, let's see, and that's all we're going to do. And since this is going to be Gib on Collide, we're only going to worry about Void on Collision Enter. And we're going to set things up so that we don't need to know what we're colliding with. We're just going to have the collision. So, um, actually, I guess we do want the collision info, don't we? Yeah. So we need uh, Collision, Collision. The reason we need this is because we need to find out where we hit the thing. So um, all we're going to do is, uh, oh wait, we don't have to care about where we hit the thing at all, never mind. Yeah. So all we're going to do is on collision, enter, did I spell that right? All right, I think I did. We're going to uh, um, instantiate gib transform dot position transform dot rotation why not and what we're going to do is we're going to ch ch then destroy our game object so this is we've done this on uh, the main show many 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 times it's really useful for a lot of different things uh, most of the time we use it for when we're getting hit by an object we want that object to go away but in this case we want the object itself to explode. And what we're going to do is we're going to set it up so that this gib is actually our explosive. 
So um, we're going to need one more script, then we're going to need a um, C sharp script. Um, uh, add explosion force on um, on start is what we're going to call it. And I'm going to look at one of our add explosion force examples here. Um, so let's go in here. We got explode on button. Let's look at explode on button as a comparison. So we're going to want to have all of these except for the button. We don't need the button anymore. So we're going to just grab these and place, paste them in here. And so this defines our explosion. And um, finally, what we're going to do is we're going to grab what we do here, right here. Just put this into start. So sweet. So this should do a single explosion force. Uh, we have a force mode here, so we can set it so that's appropriate. Um, and we have our um, give on collide. Now we do we have? I sort of had shooting before, right? I'm not crazy to think that we have a shoot type thing. We don't. Wow. I guess we're doing all of it. Sweet, no problem with that. Um, maybe spawn, spawn on button. There we go. This will work. So, so yeah, yeah. So we're going to go to our camera. We're going to put spawn on button on our camera. Um, we're going to need to create a grenade. So we're going to create a little sphere for a grenade, and I'm going to make it 0.5. It's going to be a big old grenade so we can see what it's doing, but it's still going to be, it doesn't need to be one whole unit, certainly. Um, and this sphere we're going to put, um, we're going to call this grenade. We're going to have to do gib on collide on this thing, which means we also need an explosion of some kind. So I'm going to create a, um, a particle system for our explosion, and we're just going to make it do... I'm not going to worry too much about looks for right now, um, though I am going to use additive for the particle system. And we're going to make it like something like between red and yellow. We're just going to do random between two colors. We're going to use red and yellow. And then we're going to make it a circle by, or rather a sphere for the shape and have originated from zero and all we're going to do is instead of having a rate we're just going to have a burst so we're going to do like a 100 particle burst or something and uh, make the lifetime lower like a second and make it so that the start speed is random between zero and five There we go. We've got a little bit of an explosion there. And let's uh, let's make it so that... The, oh yeah, the start lifetime. Let's make those random too. Um, random between two constants. Um, start lifetime between 0 and 1. That'll work. Yeah, that'll be good enough for our purposes. Actually, let's make it so that the speed's a little bit higher. 2 to 7. And the lifetime, let's go up to 2 seconds. All right, that'll be good enough. So, um, so now we have this. We're gonna call this uh, grenade explosion. We're going to uh, put both of these into here so that we have them as pre pre -pause. We're gonna do our grenade. And we're gonna do our grenade explosion, and we're going to have uh, add explosion force on start on our grenade explosion. And um, our grenade is going to create, so I want to apply this to our grenade explosion. And our grenade is going to create a grenade explosion. Apply that. And um, let's see, so we've got that set up now. Now all we have to do is make this thing fire. So we've got a spawn on button here, we're going to put grenade on here. And we're going to need the grenade to actually go forward, so... Um, I'm going to create another quick little script here called um, add force on start. And all we're going to do is public 
um, public float force uh, equals, uh, let's do 100.0f as the default, and public force mode, force mode, force mode. And in start, all we're going to do is rigid body dot add force. And we're going to do uh, transform dot forward times um, force. Force. Now we can actually have this thing launch out easily. So we're going to put this on our grenade. And I'm going to double check that our spot on button actually uses the orientation of our transform. It does. Good. We're set. And um, I'm going to, oh wait, I don't want to apply this to our first person controller because we use that in a few different projects. So, so in theory, we should be able to shoot grenades and they should go forward and they should explode. Let's, uh, we didn't change any of the default settings. I'm going to just quickly look at our settings on our grenades here. So we want, uh, so force mode should be impulse um, because we're doing this instantaneously actually let's do velocity changes just let's set, set, set the velocity of it so let's make it a little bit slower than that let's make it 30 and um, and then on our grenade explosion let's do the radius let's make the radius 15 so that we can see it easier though we're not gonna see it at all just yet so we're gonna go here I'm gonna hit shoot and it created some grenades and they appear to just be floating there so that's not a good sign um grenade oh yeah might help if they had a physics rigid body that will help a lot so um use gravity we do want that so if we hit play okay so now it's working but it's hitting our player so all we have to do is just make sure that whatever layer is on doesn't collide with our player so um our player we're going to put, do we have a player layer yet? No, we're going to create a player layer. Player. And we're going to put our first person controller on the player layer. Yes, change children. And then we're going to, um, I don't want to apply this. And then we're going to add one more layer. We're going to call it um, grenade, or player projectile and we don't ever want our own player projectiles hitting us so so when we go to our grenade we're going to add layer player projectile and we're going to go into the project settings physics and adjust it so that these work the way we'd expect so let me just close the animation hit thing here for a moment so um player projectile we only want to hit actually we want to hit everything except the player in this case there we go. So now if we save scene and shoot. So it worked. It's just, it's not going very far. So evidently my settings were not the way I should have put them. So grenade, um, right now add force on start is doing force 30 velocity and change. Oh, I didn't actually put that in here. That's our problem. So, um, add force on start. This should use our force mode. Save. Now this will work. I was thinking that would seem really slow for what we set. So, if we shoot, there we go. We have a grenade. And when it hits the ground, it explodes. Hooray. Explosion is not very, very awesome, but that's, that's okay. It's kind of hard to tell where we're hitting. So, let's see how the explosion effect actually works. So, I'm going to do this with our ragdolls. We're going to need one more script to actually do this, just because I'm going to set this up. Um... I'm going to go into our ragdoll, and just in case we change anything, I'm going to copy it. I'm just going to duplicate this ragdoll and put it uh, in our grenade launcher here. Because we're going to add a script to it. We want the ragdolls to not move before we um, shoot them, so I'm going to create a quick little script called sleep on start. And this will cause our rigid body to sleep. So all we're going to do is, it's a one-liner rigid body dot sleep sleep means whoops when so the game the physics engine on this is pretty efficient and we don't want to be calculating things unless they're actually being affected by something and so if you sleep a rag if you sleep a rigid body it will just stay in position until it's acted on by another force it'll just pretend that it has come to rest 
Um, it normally only happens when like it actually comes to rest. Like if you drop a block and it stops on the ground, it will eventually sleep, and it, and then it will not be doing the physics simulation anymore on that object. Uh, most of the time, you don't have to worry about it, but it's very useful if you want to just do a little quick test setup like this. So we're going to add component sleep on start for these. And now if we put our ragdolls in the scene, we can just have them be somewhere and they can just, well, our ragdolls are really big. I didn't realize they're giants. That's fine. I'm um, just going to create another ragdoll here. Just create a couple of them. Just have them just stand in here and we'll see how our explosion goes. So if we hit play, they should just be standing here, our huge giant ragdolls. And if we shoot, that wasn't very, a lot of force, was it? So let's make our explosion force considerably more forceful. So first of all, let's make it, um, it shouldn't be force, it should be impulse, because this is in instantaneous. So, um, so let's try that. See if that improves anything. I'm not holding my breath that it will. Oh, it helped a lot. Yay. Probably don't need that much force, so that's fun. I'm going to create a couple more of these ragdolls. Just ranks of ragdolls. And then we hit play. And we launch our grenades. They work. I actually liked it better when the grenade was more powerful, so let's make it more powerful again. Let's do 100, and let's launch these guys. There we go. So we have a grenade launcher. Yay. Let's save scene, save project, and thank you for joining us. Uh, hopefully you had a good time. Like that episode actually went the right speed, so... Um, Thank you very much for watching. Um, if you have any questions, please email me, pushypixels at pushypixels.com. I've been a bit busy lately, I'm so I'm sorry if I haven't gotten back to your questions just yet. Um, and uh, you can also tweet me at Drakfire, that's D-R-A-K-F-Y-R-E. Please support us on Patreon. We support, we, we really appreciate your help. Patreon.com slash cookingwithunity will get, get you there. Uh, you can also find a link in the burger. It says support the show. Uh, it has a little P next to it for Patreon. Um, in the uh, main Pushy Pixels uh, uh, um, YouTube page. Thank you very much, and you guys have a great one. And I'll, uh, I actually am going to do uh, Breakfast with Unity tomorrow, even though it's, uh, it's Thanksgiving, because it'll give me an excuse to get up in the morning on Thanksgiving, so that'll be cool. Um, thank you very much, and have a good one.